close your eyes and hold on to one thought that you're going to stay with the breath. And then you can add another thought. You're going to check and see what kind of breathing is comfortable. And that should be enough thoughts. If you follow those two thoughts, then you can drop everything else. Our problem is that we're all too fascinated by our thinking, our ideas. We allow ourselves to get pulled away by the slightest little thing. I remember John Sawat used to be very disdainful of people who had an idea and had to come right out with it. He says, before it comes out your mouth, you have to check it. And even if you keep it in your mind, you should check it too. If this is the thought that's worth holding on to. But for the dying being, learn how to drop all your thoughts, good, bad, and different, except for the ones that keep you right here. That way you get used to the skill of stepping out of your thoughts and seeing them from outside. Because that's the Buddha's skill. Remember, he got on the path because he was able to divide his thoughts into skillful and unskillful. And how did he do that? Well, he stepped out of them, looked at where they came from, looked at where they would lead to. So he wasn't in the thought. He was standing outside. So try to have that own attitude, that attitude to your thoughts as you go through the day. When you're meditating, it's easier because the rules are very simple. Anything that's not related to the breath is not welcome. It may come in, it may be a wonderful thought, but you've just got to let it go. Because you've got work to do. You've got to get the mind into concentration. You don't want wandering thoughts to pull you away. Because you really need this skill of learning how to stay with the breath, stay with one intention all the way through. Because you're going to need that as the body weakens, as the mind weakens. That's one thing you've got to keep strong. I guess as the Buddha said, when we die, it's like a fire going from one house to another. It gets carried by the wind, and who knows where the wind is going to take it. In the same way, a being leaves this body and goes to another body. It clings to its cravings. And again, cravings go every which way. The Buddha said there are 36 types all together. Can you imagine? Cravings going off in 36 directions all at once. And you just might get pulled on by one and then pulled off by another one, if you're weak. So you've got to maintain the strength of mindfulness, concentration, discernment. This is the skill you really need. So this is the skill you've got to work on right now. As for clever thoughts about the world outside, you can leave them to some other time. Right now is the time to get clever about how to keep your mind on, at, on task. Keep it on top of what it's doing. And maintain this stance of standing outside your thoughts. This is one of the reasons why we stay with the breath. Is as you're with the breath, you're something that's outside the mind. But it's close to the mind, so you can turn around and look at the mind. Make this your foundation. And even though you'll have to leave it at some point, while you've got it, get the most use out of it. And if you can learn how to stand outside your thoughts, then the Buddha says, then you're in charge of your thinking. You think the thoughts you want to think, and you don't have to think the thoughts you don't want to think. That way, they're not lording it over you. You're in charge of them. And that's the way it should be.